So we are first perusing through the antidepressants. Antidepressants are drugs that are going to be used in depression. Now, our moods alternate between being high and being low. Sometimes someone can have a high mood, that's known as mania, or someone can have a low mood, that is depression. So for the depression, that is a point of low mood. When you have got a normal mood, that is a euthymic, like normal mood. You're not too happy, you're not too sad. You can have a major depressive disorder. You can see the mood is so low. And then you can also have a minor depressive disorder. On the upper part where your mood is high, you can have mania, which is basically a very high mood, or hypomania, which is also a high mood, but it's not as high. Someone can as well have a condition in which they have got episodes of a high mood and low mood. That's the cyclothemia. Or episodes of low mood and high mood. That is a bipolar disorder. Now bipolar, we have got bipolar type 1 and bipolar type 2. Bipolar is just meaning that you have, you have episodes of both being happy or elated, that is mania, and episodes of being depressed. All right? So the second part we'll be talking about the drugs that will be treating mania, those are mood destabilizers. You want to come back to normal. But in the first part is the depression, meaning we're only concentrating on the down part of the graph. So unipolar disorder is where you have got only depression without episodes of mania. That's unipolar. It's also known as a major depressive disorder because you also have minor. So the major is a, tro a prototype and it should be at least two weeks of low mood across different circumstances. Whether someone gives you money, you still have having a low mood, whether something bad has happened. And this is accompanied by low self-esteem, low interest in normally pleasurable activities. That is anhedonia. Things that are supposed to give you pleasure, you don't find pleasure anymore in them. Low energy, feeling worthless, sense of rejection, sense of guilt, loss of appetite, loss of sleep, unnecessary and excessive worry. Maybe you see a small child and then you are like, is this one ever going to marry? how small they are. Suicidical thoughts sometimes can be there and also pain without a clear cause. You are just feeling pain, but you don't know the cause of that pain. So besides these features here, someone sometimes can also have hallucinations and delusions as part of the major depressive disorder, MDD. The cause of major depressive disorder has been hypothesized. Two things have been given. The monoaminergic theory. Now we know monoamines. Monoamines, these are basically dopamine, serotonin, and no epinephrine. So if these monoamines are low, that is one possible cause of depression. Meaning that in case we want to treat depression, we need to make sure that we raise these monohamines. So any drug. Okay, so any drug that to be able to raise the monohamines is going to be used in the treatment. So the monohamines, serotonin, noibnephrine, and dopamine. And then there's also an emerging theory or hypothesis, the glutaminergic hypothesis. But for glutamate, what they've said is that it can either be high or low. If it is high, specifically it is going to be high in the subcortex or subcortical regions. Remember, below the cortex, you have got things like the hippocampus, Locus cellulas, which is a biological clock, which will tell you when it is time to wake up in the next, we'll discuss anxiety. So we'll talk about the locus cellulas and the amygdala involved in emotion. 
Now specifically, glutamate has got different types of receptors, the NMDA, the AMPA, the kinase, specifically it's the NMDA receptors. So hyperfunction, the way I remember this one is, think of this, the cortex is, the cortex is on top, the subcortex is down. But it is opposite. In hyperfunction, it is the subcortex that is not functioning well. And then in hypofunction, it is the cortex that is on top that is not functioning well, like the prefrontal cortex, the perirhino, and the temporal cortices. So because of this, like looking at the NMDA receptors, you have got a drug, ketamine. Ketamine is a non-competitive inhibitor of NMDA or it is an antagonist at the NMDA receptors. So you can see since it's an antagonist, meaning that it is reducing, right? Reducing the effect of the, of the glutamate. So we expect that it should work more on which, is it in the subcortex or the cortex? So we want to work more where there is hyperfunction. So ketamine is going to be producing its function by reducing on the high, dopamine or glutamate that is in this pathway. One thing is that with ketamine, it produces rapid and prolonged antidepressant effect in patients with the major depressive disorder. It's rapid and it is prolonged. So ketamine can as well be used in the treatment of resistant depression and amnesia, forgetting. So when it comes to the classification of the antidepressants, I've seen questions just talk about classification of antidepressants. You can classify them on their chemical structure and the mechanism of action, but classification depending on the chemical structure is not really good because you can't determine how the drug is actually working. But the mechanism of action, you are looking at it, how the drug is working, the receptors which it is affecting, and the possible side effects of that drug. That is why this classification is good. Classification depend, based on the mechanism of action, you are going to have 13 classes. Of the 13, two are the classical drugs, and then 11 are non-classical. So, of the two, so as we are saying, 11 of these are going to be uh, based on how they work will be blocking one or more of the reuptake transporters. Remember when dopamine has done its function, it's supposed to be taken back into the cell, some with norepinephrine and serotonin. So the 11 of the 13 will be blocking reuptake or they are going to be basically getting to increase the monoamines on the receptors. And then the 12th one is going to inhibit the monoamines. So it will be the MAO inhibitor. Not, increase, not preventing the reuptake, but preventing the, the enzyme that breaks down these monoamines. And then the 13th one will be working now on the glutamate, the NMDA, like the same ketamine that we have talked about. So on the classification of the antidepressants, we have got chemical structure and mechanism of action. Chemical structure, we have those which are unicyclic, tricyclic, tetracyclic, and motoring. Unicyclic, we only have one guy, and I don't want you to forget it, bupropion, because we are going to see also, it has got an important work on the mechanism of action. The tricyclic and depressants end in mine, imipramine, decipramine, and then you have got one that doesn't end in mine, but we need to know it because of its importance. You use this guy for those people that can't stop urinating, enuresis, okay, bedwetting, imitriptyline. It's going to be used. And then you have the tetracycline, you can see the met metazepine, myenserine, maproxine, and the amoxepine. The screen is not showing. Uh, is it the same with others? Are we able to see the screen? Doc, maybe it is a network where you are. 
you can maybe just try to disconnect and then connect back so the mount ring we have got one drag there vilazodon okay just think mount a lot of rings right and then a lot the last last letter as the chma v there comes vilazodon but don't forget bob bio propion when it comes to mechanism of action two of those drugs are going to be depending on the mechanism because they are 13 two are going to be classical those are the tricyclic and depressants these imipramine disipramine and imitriptyline and then others are going to be mal inhibitors and then the other 11 are going to be non classical like the selective serotonin uptake inhibitors serotonin norepinephrine uptake inhibitors and then you have got others so these are the other 11 okay but here i've put all the 13 and examples of one question that he showed which is already in the test they gave I think I saw serotonin, selective serotonin uptake inhibitors and others. It was matching. So they will mention a drug you put, whether it is a selective serotonin inhibitor or if it is SNRI. So we need to make sure that at least we know. Tricyclic and depressants have already mentioned things like amitriptyline, imipramine, disipramine. You can see how they are ending. Notriptyline, clomipramine. Trimipramine, you can see how they're ending. If they don't end in tilin, then they're ending in mine. Okay. And then the mal inhibitors. The mal inhibitors, we'll talk about them again. They are, I love them. You can classify them into hard resigns and non hard resigns. For those which are non selective, remember mal, we did discuss this also yesterday when we were talking about the. Parkinson's disease. We have got MAO A and MAO B. You have got some of these inhibitors that only inhibit MAO A, others only inhibit MAO B. Others are non selective. So for the non selective MAO inhibitors, you can classify them as adrazines or adrazine derivatives and non hadrazine derivatives. For the hadrazine derivatives, that's where we're going to find the phenylzine, the hydrocarbazine, and this one. He brought he has brought a question also. He mentioned to say the question, I don't know if it's section B of the exam or the test, give the mechanism of action of hydrocarbazine. So hydrocarbazine is a mal inhibitor. Okay. And then we have got those which are only selective to mal B, inhibiting mal B, like selegilin, rasagilin, saf safinamide we have got this selective serotonin inhibitors these ones are only inhibiting serotonin fluoxetine sertraline paroxetine cetalopram and these others so if they mention them at least if we can remember the name selective serotonin no epinephrine reuptake inhibitors venlafaxin this this even la vaccine duloxetine and these others but i want us also to look at can you see bupropion which was the only unicyclic and present that we mentioned it is a no epinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibited inhibiting both no epinephrine and dopamine and then the selective no epinephrine uptake inhibitor also there which one should I also mention? Which ketamine we can see is a glutamine antagonist, and then we have got also something that yes, this one number nine. This one is no adrenergic alpha 2 reuptake antagonist, it is an antagonist with a specific serotonergic receptor 2 and 3 antagonism. NASA, so we have got the metazapine and miancerine just don't forget the mm these two m's these are no adrenergic alpha 2 alpha 2 antagonists these ones are important and then we have got one amoxapine amoxapine is only alone it is a serotonin no epinephrine reuptake inhibitor and serotonin 
re receptor antagonist present with potent and psychotic D2 receptor blockade. Only it is inhibiting both serotonin and no epinephrine reuptake. It's only alone. So every time you hear duo serotonin, no epinephrine reuptake inhibitor, amoxapine for those matching questions and those MCQs. And then you have got also a typical and psychotic that exhibit weak D2. You have got olanzapine, quetiapine, risperidone. These guys, we also use them. These are also antipsychotics. Okay. At least we've mentioned those. Now, no, these drugs, the classical guys are very good because they can treat the condition very well. But the only problem is this, they have got a lot of side effects. So that is why you'd opt to use others. But even if you use others because they have got fewer side effects, they are not as good as the typical ones. So let's talk about them quickly. So starting with the tricyclic and depressants, these guys, their mechanism of action they were actually the best to be and the first line to be used, except when selective serotonin uptake inhibitors were discovered because they have got fewer side effects. But these guys, their mechanism of action is basically blocking the reuptake of no epinephrine and serotonin. Dopamine, they have got only lead to effect on dopamine reuptake, but normally they prevent the reuptake of serotonin and no epinephrine. And when you look at these drugs, they can some of them they have got only inhibition of the reuptake of serotonin others only the inhibition of the reuptake of neopinephrine others both of them like imipramine is uh, going to st stop the reuptake of serotonin and neopinephrine both but it also has got a high and cholinergic effect so you can tell the side effect that is going to have wow decipramine is selective only to preventing the reuptake of no epinephrine not the serotonin and then a chlormipramine is going to be selective for serotonin and not no epinephrine so let's take note of this amipramine for both decipramine only no epinephrine. Chlormipramine, it is serotonin. Okay. But the way the tricyclic and depressants work is that they have got, they are five in one. They can block serotonin reuptake. They can block no epinephrine reuptake. Dopamine is just a bit. They only prevent dopamine reuptake, only a bit. But they are of also anticholinergic side. Uh, they have got anticholinergic effects specifically they work on m receptors by blocking them receptors they have got also alpha 1 antagonism and also antihistamine this the pharmacological effect for the tricycling and depressant is produced by selective reuptake of serotonin and selective reuptake of noepinephrine these other receptors will be producing side effects Okay, so therefore the side effects of the TCS, the tricyclic and depressants, only histamine as antihistamines, they are going to lead to weight gain and drowsiness. The thing is that when you block the histamine receptors, you are going to have appetite. So that appetite is going to give you the weight gain. And then antimus clinics, we know antimus clinic. Acetylcholine in itself is parasympathetic, but antimus clinic that is sympathetic, more like sympathetic. When you are running, you can't go to the toilet. So you have constipation, you have got dry mouth, blurred vision, and you can't urinate. So all those things. And then for alpha 1, it is going to cause dizziness and a drop in blood pressure. Because remember, adre. Uh, adrenaline is released for fight and flight, but then you are blocking the fight and flight. Therefore, there is going to be a decrease in blood pressure. Okay, so these are the side effects. 
At the present time, you don't normally use the tricyclic antidepressants. They have been reserved for depression, uh, depression that can't respond to the good guys, like the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the selective, the serotonin noepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, and the others, especially the selective serotonin. These are the best. So these guys have lost popularity because they are. You, they are not tolerable. They have got a lot of side effects, as you have seen. They are difficult to use, and they are deadly in overdose. Okay. So, what are other uses of tricyclic antidepressants? Specifically, I'd mentioned to say amitriptyline is used in bedwetting for those who are bedwetting, and then also pain, like neuropathic and chronic pain, like and also lack of sleep insomnia you can use these guys so three things pain neuropathic and chronic enuresis and insomnia the mal inhibitors you have got mal a and mal b now mal a inhibitors these guys can inhib mal a itself breaks down melatonin epinephrine noepinephrine and also some Trace amines like tyramine. This is important for you to take note, tyramine. Mao B, this guy will be breaking down dopamine to be specific. But dopamine is also being broken down by Mao A. So the best drug that you want to use for, if you want just to prevent the breakdown of dopamine, is Mao B. Because if you use Mao A, it is the inhibitors of mal a they are not only increasing the concentration of dopamine they are also increasing the concentration of melatonin epinephrine noepinephrine so they will lead to a lot of side effects so because of this the mal inhibitors these guys you don't give them with the foods that have got tyramine in them because if you give with foods that have got tyramine what is happening is this you have given a drug that is inhibiting the enzyme that breaks down tyramine, meaning that tyramine is going to be increasing. And when the tyramine is increasing and increasing, it is going to, it can be converted to some other things like serotonin. And that leads to accumulation of that serotonin. And because it has increased, it leads to what is known as the serotonin syndrome or hypertensive crisis. So tyramine containing foods like cheese, red wine, beer should be avoided. And also some drugs like, please take note of these drugs, you see them in papers, phenyl, propanolamine, and ephedrine. These drugs lead to the release of no epinephrine and that leads to the hypertensive crisis there you can see it, they are having phi at, at least phe so if you just see that option phenyl propanolamine phenyl propanolamine and epidrine so these guys will lead to what is known as a cheesy effect which is basically an increase in blood pressure because they release epinephrine so the classification of these mal inhibitors, you can classify them. You have got those which are non-selective. They can inhibit both mal A and mal B. You can classify them as hydrazine derivatives and non-hydrazines. The hydrazines, you have got phenylzine. You can see the end in zine. Phenylzine, hydrocarbazine. You also have the nialamide and isocarboxide. And then for the non hydrazide you only have one, trinil cypromine. Please don't forget, especially the phenylzine, don't forget these guys, the end enzymes. Hydrocarbazine, this one is also coming. I don't know if that question you mentioned was the exam or it was the test to say give the mechanism of action. You also have some drugs which are selective, not working for both inhibiting mal A and mal B, but only one of them. Like for example, you have only mal A inhibitors, and these are reversible. You can reverse. So reversible inhibitor of mal A, that is RIMA. These guys 
are good they can be used for treatment of depression and de dysthymia dysthymia is just mild depression but then it is long lasting it is not that bad but then it's long lasting and then selective mild b inhibitors selegiline rasagiline safinamide these guys we talked about them also in parkinson's so in high doses these drugs are not good because they require restrictions and we've talked about the restriction taking food that contains tyramine what are the side effects you are going to see this in the paper orthostatic hypotension and how do they cause a drop in blood pressure remember these guys are inhibiting no epinephrine and no epinephrine is fight or flight right so that guy increases blood pressure so if you inhibit what increases blood pressure you are going to have low blood pressure but this is specifically when you are standing and this is because of accumulation of dopamine okay dopamine is going to be increasing in the sympathetic cervical ganglia and when that happens dopamine starts acting as an inhibitor an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the sympathetic remember dopamine is not inhibitory but specifically here to be inhibiting the noepinephrine which are, produces hypertension so you have got orthostatic hypotension selegiline which is a selective mild b inhibitor also causes hypotension nausea vomiting please take note simple side effects right nausea vomiting hypotension and agitation while the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors these ones include fluoxetin sertraline paroxetine cetalopram these guys are basically inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin specifically serotonin alone and the way they were developed is because they were trying to look for a drug that would be better than it tricyclic and depressant because the tricyclic and depressants were also antihistamine and cholinergic and also alpha 1 antagonists so they are trying to look for a drug that won't work on those receptors and then they found these guys and they are only selective to serotonin so these guys are more popular than other drugs because they are easy to use they are safe even when you overdose them and they are tolerable and they are cheap and besides that they can be used for many conditions like panic disorder generalized anxiety disorder obsessive compulsive disorder where you just feel compelled to do something and so that leads you to being stressed like for example every time you just want to be brushing your teeth or every time you just want to be combing your hair and you are so obsessed with doing that and also bulimia right so these guys have also been shown bulimia is you getting to eat so fast in the shortest period of time and then they are also good for post-traumatic stress disorder like maybe you saw someone having an accident so every time you see a car maybe it gives you that stress and it gives you that that anxiety and also dysthymia and migraine the, these headaches side defects for the serotonin selective serotonin uptake inhibitors anxiety now remember these guys are used also in the treatment okay these guys are using the treatment of anxiety these guys are used in the treatment of insomnia but then they cause anxiety they also cause insomnia why so that is in the initial treatment when you just start giving them they'll cause anxiety before they can start causing the anxiolytic effect okay they also cause insomnia before they can start preventing the insomnia they also cause sexual dysfunction GIT problems nocturnal myoclonus myoclonus where muscles are contracting in a nocturnal is because it's at night so it's an involuntary contraction of muscles at night they also cause akathisia rest the, you can't just rest you are just moving okay you can't be still because of stimulation and subsequent desensitization or dysregulation of the serotonin 2 and serotonin 3 receptors specifically
And then these guys, the selective noepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, these are noepinephrine, remember, venlafaxine and its metabolite, desivenlafaxine, duloxetine, and the levomionaciprin. So these guys, when, when you when you are seated, just be looking at the names. You look at the names. So when at least when you've looked at them enough, not really that you master them, but at least you can be able to identify when you see name multiple choice. These guys which are selective to noepinephrine can be used for the major depressive disorder, which is the unipolar disorder, pain disorders including neuropathies and fibromyalgia, generalized anxiety disorders, stress un urinary incontinence. When you are stressed, you can't control urination. You can give these drugs. Vasomotor symptoms of menopause. Okay, But then the way they work, they depend on the dose. Like at low dose, they only they work as selective serotonin uptake inhibitors. But these are serotonin, no epinephrine uptake inhibitors. At low doses, they only be working on serotonin alone. Medium dose, they also include no epinephrine. And then at high dose, they also be preventing their reuptake of dopamine. Actually, it is shown that no epinephrine transporter can also transport dopamine. So if you inhibit the transport like if you inhibit the transporter that transports on epinephrine you are also going to be in you are also going to have some dopamine because it's the same transporter that transports them how they found out that was by using the prefrontal cortex the prefrontal cortex doesn't have any dopamine transporters it only has the transporters for for the no epinephrine but then what they found out was uh, when the noepinephrine is being reuptaken, the concentration of dopamine is also reducing. So they actually found out because we don't have a transporter for dopamine. Why is it reducing? It is transported together with the noepinephrine. Okay. So this drug, levomionaciprine, has been found to work in Alzheimer's disease because... There is an enzyme, beta site amyloid precursor protein cleaving enzyme, basis 1. This enzyme actually forms beta amyloid. And this beta amyloid is what leads to Alzheimer's disease. So if you inhibit this enzyme, you inhibit the formation of beta amyloid. And so you prevent Alzheimer's disease. Don't forget the level. Mu nasipran. You also have those which are going to preventing the reuptake of noepinephrine and dopamine. This is specifically bupropion. This guy. Remember what we said about bupropion? It was the only unicyclic antidepressant, and it is preventing the reuptake. It's the only guy preventing the reuptake of both noepinephrine and dopamine. It can be used theoretically in attention deficit hyperactive disorder and also in the treatment of abuse of and dependency for example someone that is uh in on opioid withdrawal they can't with, stop taking opioids alcohol withdrawal smoking cessation and psychostimulant addiction you can give them these drugs and then they can help treatment of abuse dependence conditions you have got this drug that is only specific to noepinephrine only noepinephrine reboxetine and atomoxetine these guys they can they have got a lot of uses besides them being used in depression like in panic disorder attention deficit hyperactive disorder bulimia nervosa eating so fast narcolepsy excessive daytime sleep it's not insomnia because insomnia is at night, right? Resistant pediatric nocturnal enuresis. So also besides the amitriptyline used in urinate uh, for those who are bedwetting, also the noepinephrine reapt selective noepinephrine reuptake inhibitor like reboxetine and atomoxetine. That is a very fast summary on the 
the presence and actually it's the entire topic mood stabilizers um, i just want to mention one thing just the same for test tools sake for the other we'll revise for the exam the lithium so in bipolar disorder is a disorder where i've got both elation mania and depression so for mood stabilizer like lithium you, you are most interested in treating the mania like this high mood that's what we're trying to treat what are the signs and symptoms of mania it will begin abruptly you are going to have a decreased need for sleep it is not insomnia because someone is too go oriented they want to get a plus so they stop to sleep you know they are they, they have got these situations where they are deprived of sleep because they feel too elated they are too go oriented they still feel too happy irritable they are now engaging in multiple projects i want to give these examples just for the sake of remembering you want to in one day you want to finish 10 topics and it is in in neuroscience in pathology in microbiology you know multiple new projects too much go oriented well mania and then someone can also have rapid loud speech racing thoughts that may lead to flight of ideas because you are thinking of a lot of things too much at the same time ideas will start to go increased motor activity sexuality physical restlessness and psycho psychotic symptoms can also be seen in severe cases it can be occurring together with depressive symptoms they can be mixed so what are the guidelines i've seen one question in the exam where they've just said it's an essay question give the treatment guidelines for the manic phase of bipolar disorder so for the treatment guidelines for acute manic episode the selection of um, pharmacotherapy for rapid control of behavioral symptoms sleep restoration and mood stabilization has to occur so when you are getting a drug what you want to do is to help with the behavior like man you know the someone is too elated they're not behaving just to normal you want to at least restore the behavior to restore sleep and to stabilize the mood that is the aim of treatment so initial treatment is to reduce agitation because if someone is hyperactive like that they will be aggressive impulsive so i want to prevent them from harming themselves and also harming others so the pharm pharmacotherapy option for the manic episode will, the first line will be lithium and valproate or valproic acid and also the second generation antipsychotic so please don't forget these three valproic acid lithium and second generation so meaning that in a question they can give an example of a second generation so we need to go back and look at some second generation and psychotic so that if they mention it instead of just saying second generation we can still identify that it is part of the answers for first line when you combine lithium or the vaploic acid with the second generation and psychotic it is more effective than using them alone first generation and psychotics they can as well be used but then there are second or third line options benzodiazepines because they've got a short acting they are short acting you can actually give them as a short term adjuvants okay because they are going to start working real quick in comparison to these other drugs actually when you give lithium you're going to give the benzos and the anti and the antipsychotics is a congee because they act a bit quicker but then you want to avoid the benzodiazepines in a patient that has got a history of substance use disorder sud because these benzodiazepines can actually get to worse than that so when there is resistance to these drugs 
Electroconvulsive therapy can also help and clozapine. Remember, clozapine is an antipsychotic. Actually, electroconvulsive therapy can also be used in early treatment. It was avoided in early treatment because they thought it, uh, it has got risk of manic episodes. But then it doesn't, they've just found out it is good. It doesn't cause those manic episodes. So you can use it even in early treatment. You also have some other drugs which are used to treat uh, the mania, like gabapentin. Please don't forget, like these are some of these are examples of anesthesias: gabapentin, lamotrigine, li leve, tiracetam, verapamil, tiagabin, and topiramid. At least look at them. Hope you are going to recognize them in MCQs because I've seen them really a lot. How does lithium work? The mechanism of action is not known. But just think of mania. Remember in depression, there was low dopamine. There was low no epinephrine. There was low serotonin. Mania is the opposite of depression. Like these guys are high. So what you are basically trying to do is to reduce these hormones or these neurotransmitters. So these guys will decrease this serotonin reuptake and increase postsynaptic receptor sensitivity. The sensitivity on the postsynaptic cell is becoming high. But that is opposite to what I've said to decrease them. But they inhibit dopamine synthesis. They decrease central nervous system adrenergic activity. They also enhance GABA activity because GABA will inhibit nearly all the hormones. And they also alter calcium function, modulate second messenger system. Okay, so these are some of the side effects. I mean the mechanism of action. When you are giving this lithium, you can start at those low doses and then you start titrating until you reach a dose that is good. But you want to go much beyond because toxicity of lithium isn't good at all. So for this, what is again of importance with, with uh, lithium is that it follows first order linear kinetics. So meaning that when you increase the amount of drug even the amount that, uh, that is going to be in the blood is going to increase proportionally. So that can lead to toxicity. Okay. And then the clearance of lithium is impacted by dehydration and sodium depression and cardiac and renal dysfunction. If the heart or the kidney is not working well, the clearance of lithium will be bad and that will lead to lithium toxicity or if someone is dehydrated. So there are actually some things that can increase the concentration of lithium that leads to toxicity like loss of water, dehydration. So think of any drug that leads to dehydration like the thiazide diuretics, NSAIDs, AC inhibitors, and the loop diuretics. These guys will increase the toxicity of lithium. And then you have got those drugs that will decrease the concentration of lithium, like caffeine and the theophylline. Please take note. So lithium can be given as a single dose and it will still be effective. And it can be given daily once daily dosing can reduce the occurrence of polyuria because remember you don't need to give lithium when there is dehydration or with the drugs that promote urination lithium itself causes too much urination polyuria so if you give like once daily a dose it can at least reduce that and the pharmacokinetics of lithium is changed in pregnancy. But lithium, if you follow the books, not really does it cause the teratogenicity, but it can cause cardiac abnormalities. Cardiac abnormalities. 
So let's take note of that. You don't use it when there is hypersensitivity, when there is a cardiovascular disease, dehydration, or sodium depression. And some warning, lithium toxicity. Lithium can unmask Brugada syndrome. This is a genetic disease where there is abnormal, often asymptomatic ECG, and it can lead to cardiac death. So it can unmask, it can behave like Brugada syndrome. Okay. So as we said, lithium can increase the risk of fetal malformations. If you read in Kazum, it will say not really concerned with teratogenicity, but cardiac problems, not neuro, these other teratogenic effects, like the Epstein anomaly, which are cardiac problems. It takes a bit of time for it to start working, like six to 10 days. That's why I want to give the benzodiazepines at the beginning and also the antipsychotics. Depression greater than one month may be required for maximum improvement. So you can as well get to help in that. But you know the problem with these drugs. Remember these drugs are treating mania. Mania is a elated mode. So meaning that their side effect is that when you give them for long, and they can go into depression. So that's one thing that you want to take note. Just the side effect effects or the side effects they can cause acne vulgaris pimples they co can cause psoriasis this is where the, uh, some where you start having like thick skin S skin starts just to become thick at some points especially in the hairs like that alopecia loss of hair can also happen because of lithium Thyroid function should be tested because lithium can induce hypothyroidism, which causes the hair changes. Lithium as well has got cardiovascular problems. It can result in two of these arrhythmias. It can also cause some GIT problems like nausea, vomiting in early therapy. These are early symptoms and also dry mouth and the thirst. It, can, it also has problems on the urinary system. It can cause polyuria, okay? So initial strategy is to reduce urinary frequency and output. So you want to, because you don't want to stop lithium because simply someone is urinating too much. So you can simply give a drug that will reduce on the urination and that drug is amyloride. Please take note of that, amyloride. It also has, has high, it can cause hypothyroidism, but even when it can cause hypothyroidism, it can as well cause hyperthyroidism, depending with the case, okay? So hypercalcemia may also occur. Remember the parathyroid hormone is in, and the thyroid hormone, hormone is important actually the thyroid gland because it produces calcitonin which is also important in calcium metabolism so you also need to be finding out the calcium levels because it can cause hypercalcemia why is it so hypercalcemia remember the parathyroid hormone causes hypercalcemia and then the calcitonin reduces the calcium the hypercalcium. Even weight gain can as well occur. A lot of side effects, also some side effects on blood, hematological side effects. It can cause leukocytosis. Also some neurological side effects like tremors. So a lot of problems. So now how, how are you going to manage or treat this toxicity? Sodium polystyrene can help, okay? Force diuresis is not recommended. Don't want to perform the diuresis, but then hemodialysis can also get to help support as a supportive measure when there is toxicity to lithium.
you can remove the excess lithium in blood hemodialysis not forced dialysis urination but in toxicity take note of sodium polystyrene So with the toxicity of lithium, permanent neurotoxicity can occur. Permanent symptoms which are described in rare cases like short and long-term memory, ataxia, dysarthria, and tremors can occur. These clusters of signs are described as uh, silent signs, the lithium effectuated neurotoxicity. And this part is also important because you find also MCQs from papers. What should you, what should the patient be aware of as they are getting this treatment? Duration of therapy. So they need to be aware that the therapy is lifelong when they start taking the lithium. And if lithium is used to treat acute episode, continue medication without interruption unless not tolerated. So unless if the drug is not working, you stop. But if it's working, you should continue. Oh. So besides being tolerated, also adverse effects and non-adherence should be considered. And then lithium should be taken at the same time every day as prescribed. So if you want to be taking at this, maybe 10 should be taken at the same time every day and then take with food if this medication causes an upset stomach you should also avoid caffeine remember what we said the caffeine reduces the like coffee foods which contain this caffeine right and then also let your provide know if you significantly change your sodium intake remember sodium very important also report changes of worsening of nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, tremor because it's a side effect. Patient education. Remember what happens is that when a patient is taking lithium, they'll be urinating very much and so they will also have the edge of drinking a lot of water. So they need to maintain adequate hydration and avoid dehydration because it can lead to toxicity. They should also avoid the anti-inflammatory drugs. Remember, they also include they lead to toxicity, the NSAIDs. And then be sure that all your provided, uh, providers are aware that you are prescribed lithium. So, for example, this is a person that goes to a lot of doctors. One doctor doesn't know that they are prescribed lithium. They can allow them or prescribe to them something that can lead to toxicity, like maybe the NSAIDs or the loop diuretics. So contract your provider if you are breastfeeding, become pregnant, or plan to become pregnant because of those cardiac anomalies. Report any worsening of sleep, depressive, or manic symptoms. So that is it, that. Valproic acid is another drug that you can use, but we'll not talk much about this. Vaproic acid for it, it can lead to teratogenicity. And then we also have lamotrigine. This is another drug that we are able to use to treat mania. Also, carbamazepine can also be used to treat mania. Carbamazepine blocks voltage sensitive sodium channels, it also blocks NMDA receptors modulates or decreases presynaptic aspartate and it's also and has got unscending properties to decrease rapid cycling and mix state so just that so it is a short topic you can see this is the entire topic so these others we can just read a bit we can now start the question since we have done a long overview Number one, all of the following concerning antidepressant drugs is correct except all antidepressants have similar therapeutic efficacy. Selection of antidepressant drugs is based on many factors including patient comorbidity, associated adverse effects, drug interactions. Antidepressant drugs have delayed therapeutic efficacy effects seen after two to four weeks. 
all the patients respond similarly to the various antidepressant drugs. Which one would you pick, doctors, for this one? Anyone? Which one amongst these options appears to be false? Okay, I can start with this one. So D, all patients, not all patients respond similarly to all the types of antidepressants. But then all antidepressants have got the same therapeutic efficacy, similar. And depending with the comorbidities, other conditions that the patient has, you can decide to give them one drug over the other. And antidepressants have got a delayed therapeutic efficacy effect. That's why you give some which are a bit faster. All of the following are indications of lithium therapy except Tourette syndrome, prophylaxis of treatment of bipolar disorder, prophylaxis and treatment of acute mania. The other one is just prophylaxis. I don't know what it was supposed to finish. Which one can we pick? among the three for getting D. Anyone? A, okay. Is, is there any other suggestion? We can be free just to open the mic and then be able to speak. Okay, I also go with A. I also go with A. All of the following drugs are used in the treatment of the manic phase of bipolar disorder except antipsychotic drugs, carbamazepine, lithium, antidepressants. Which one ca can't we use for the manic phase of bipolar? D, thank you so much. Is there a different option from anyone? Or anyone that agrees with D? And psychotic drugs, carbamazepine, lithium, and antidepressant. So remember, mania is the up part, the upper part of the graph. Depression is the down part. When you are treating mania, you are trying to go down, but antidepressants you are trying to go up. So antidepressants can lead to mania. And then these drugs that you use for mania can lead to depression. So you can't use antidepressants for mania because they are actually going to be... They will just be... They will not do anything. Mania is you have got a high state you want to reduce. Antidepressants is assuming that you are depressed but here you are too happy you are too elated all the following are used as mood destabilizers in bipolar disorder except fluvoxamine valproate gabapentin lithium which one would we pick here Anyone? Anyone?
So remember what we had mentioned in mood stabilizers, the drugs you are using for mania or for the bipolar disorder. You have got lithium, the main guy, valproate. You have got other anesthesia drugs. And then you have got uh, those things like GABA, pentin. You also have the antipsychotics. Let me just show the diagram so that you just look at it again. And then you can be able to remember them. So these guys. The first one, lithium, valproate, and the sec second generation antipsychotics. You can also use first generation and the benzodiazepines. But you can as well use clozapine and the is electroconvulsive therapy. But you can as well use these. Gabapentin, lamotrigine, levetiracetam, verapimil, tiagabine, and topiramate. But then the only thing is that you you don't recommend to use these ones alone for the manic phase as a monotherapy. Instead, you combine them with, with other drugs. But you can use them for the treatment. So which one then can we pick? Yes, A. Right. The use of diuretic during lithium treatment is contraindicated because A, it increases the renal clearance of lithium causing underdosage. B, increases renal reabsorption of lithium causing toxicity. C, it preserves water in the body causing swelling. D, it prevents loss of sodium thus preventing preserving water which one can we pick here b increases renal reabsorption d which one d or b or b Yes, the problem with diuretics, uh, diuretics is the toxicity, increases renal reabsorption. Which of the following is not a reuptake inhibitor? Please, this one is part of the, is it the test of the exam? Which of the following is not a reuptake inhibitor? Cocaine, cetraline, chromipramine, bupropion, baspiron. Which one can we pick? Okay, so cocaine, we know cocaine is a reuptake inhibitor. That's why it's used in abuse, right? Cetraline, we've mentioned cetraline in today's class on the antidepressants, and we know the mechanism of action of the antidepressants mostly. They prevent the reuptake of any one of the three monoamines. Bupropion, we just said it is a noepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor. Baspirin, we are going to talk about it when we talk about anxiety. It is an antagonist for serotonin, not an inhibitor. So that's the answer. Which of the following regarding metazapine is true? Remember I said don't forget about metazapine. Don't forget. I said talk, take note of these two M's. There was metazapine. And miaserin, those two. If let's hope I've pronounced the other one well. A, a central alpha 2 autoreceptor antagonist. B, a serotonin noepinephrine, no adrenaline reuptake inhibitor. C, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. A tricyclic antidepressant dopamine no adrenaline reuptake inhibitor. Which one can we pick?
N1. Okay, so this guy, metazapine, when you are classifying it, depending on the structure, it is a tetracyclic antidepressant. And then when the mechanism action, it is alpha 2. Remember the two emus, those are adrenergic alpha 1, adrenergic receptor antagonists. Okay. A 34-year-old woman with bipolar disorder has been controlled on lithium 600 mules two times daily. This one is also in the exam. Is it a test? Two times daily for the past 18 months after failing other medical medication trials. She presents to a primary care physician for increased nausea and vomiting. Lithium concentration is 1.1 milli equivalents per meal per litre, and she is found to be approximately four weeks pregnant. Her past psychiatric history is complicated with six hospitalizations since the age of 18 for both manic and depressive disorder. So that is a bipolar disorder. Or severe with mixed features. She has attempted suicide three times. What is the best course of action in this treatment? Begin a slow cross taper to divalproxic acid, sodium, sorry, discontinue lithium and begin closer by titration. Start a slow taper of lithium to a target concentration of 0 0.6. Stop the lithium and avoid the use of psychotropic medication. Anyone who can help us with this one, their suggestion? Pardon? Okay, C. Yes, thank you so much. So C is the answer here. Remember, someone has, someone is, uh, is having a bipolar disorder. They have got a history of wanting to kill themselves, and they are pregnant. They remember. One problem with lithium is that it can cause heart defects. But then it is at a certain concentration. So when you reduce the concentration, you are not reaching a concentration that can lead to those other side defects. So that can still help. So it's C. A 26-year-old patient is being discharged today after being hospitalized for treatment of a manic episode associated with bipolar disorder. Patient is being discharged on lithium, olanzapine, and lorazepam with an outpatient clinic follow-up in two weeks. Patient expresses a new interest in having a health lifestyle to include a regimen of dieting and exercise. What would be the most important patient education point related to medication safety over the next two weeks to provide. A. Describe the risk of excessive caffeine intake that may result in elevated lithium concentration. B. Caution to not abruptly reduce or fully eliminate sodium from the diet because this may result in decreased lithium concentration. C. Decree, describe the signs or symptoms of lithium toxicity and the importance of adequate hydration during exercise as of uh, ex excision with dehydration may result in increased lithium concentration. D. Support the decision to take on a healthy lifestyle and advise the metabolic effects of olanzapine may contribute to cardiovascular disease. Anyone with a thought for this one? C. Oh, oh. B. I'm asking for if we can if we can just say something about our options so that we can others can get why we we pick what we are picking. Doc, would you help? 
with the option that you've picked. Thank you so much. I think that is it. Remember you have released them on lithium. They will be going to exercise. They will be sweating, losing a lot of water. And dehydration leads to toxicity of lithium. So they should always keep hydrated. So see, thank you so much. Which of the following drugs will show interaction with cheesy containing foods causing severe Hypertension, phenylzine, leboxetine, metazapine, fluvoxamine. Anyone who can help? Anyone? All right, so remember we said the drugs that are involved or concerned or every time you hear of the cheesy, cheesy reaction, it is the mal inhibitors. And we said that the non-selective mal inhibitors, we can classify them into hydrazines and non-hydrazines. Hydrazines, the first guy we even mentioned was phenylzine. So this drug, you don't want to give it with foods that contain tyramine because of the hypertensive crisis. The following are the common clinical uses of antidepressant drugs except anxiety disorder, neuropathic pain, bipolar depression, schizophrenia. Anyone? Which one of these conditions won't you use and the presence for? Okay, let's start with uh, Zizophrenia, which is uh, psychosis. Are you able to use antidepressants in psychosis? Just just looking at the way the two conditions are. Someone that is psychotic, you have got high dopamine. Someone that is depressed has got low dopamine. So in one, you are trying to increase. In another, you are trying to decrease. Anyway, we can now go on and suggest the other answers. I think we've been mentioning to say that depressants, for example, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, those are also used in anxiety, disorders, in insomnia. They are also used for neuropathic pain. Bipolar disorders go two phases. It has got the manic phase and the depressive phase. But then I don't want to com comment. Okay, so for the first two, it is automatic. They can be, and depressants can be used. So let's pick between C and D. Anyone that can help? You see? Why would why have you chosen that one, Doc? Uh, 
I've not gotten. I've not gotten really what you've said. Would you mind repeating? All right. So you will not use it in bipolar disorder. You can worsen the condition. Remember in bipolar disorder, if you give antidepressants, someone is going to have mania. They will become elated. But in schizophrenia, psychosis, it depends with which which path we are talking about. Like in the mesolimbic, that's where you have got high dopamine, right? Or like producing the positive symptoms. And in, in the mesocortical, you have got low dopamine. And then that is pre producing the negative symptoms. So you can still use antidepressants because they're trying to reduce, depending with which which pathway that would work so they can still be used here because just also the condition itself <clears throat> well i wanted to mention mania but that's not you can use the antipsychotics you i mean the antidepressants in psychosis hope we've gotten that one bipolar it can lead to mania if you use the antidepressants manic episodes or bipolar disorder may be treated using lamotrogen donizepil galantamine NSAIDs anyone to help with this one Yes, Lamotrogen, that's true. All the following statements are true about antidepressant drugs except... Did we answer this? All are true about antidepressant except they have delayed therapeutic efficacy, they have similar therapeutic efficacy, patients may respond differently to different antidepressants, selection of which antidepressant drug to use is not affected by comorbidity. Which one would we pick? Okay, this one is just the same as what we already answered. It's just that we've changed the options. So antidepressants, the selection, ex all the following statements are true except, look at this, selection of which antidepressant drug to use is not affected by com comorbidities. It is affected by comorbidities. If you have other conditions, it, would, it might refuse you to use one type of four antidepressant than when you have got others. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors are used in treatment of depression. What are the most common adverse effects of these drugs? Monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Headaches, CNX expandment, posterior hypotension, headache, nausea, vomiting, dry mouth, blurred vision, constipation, face, nausea, vomiting. Which one can we pick? Anyone to help? I, I did I did put a slide there about the side effects of selegiline as a selective mild B inhibitor. And we said that surprisingly the mild B inhibitors also show orthostatic hypotension, not the mal B, but just the mal inhibitors, they show orthostatic hypotension. So the side effects are hypotension, dizziness, headache, nausea, vomiting, insomnia, weight gain, increased appetite, fatigue, sexual dysfunction. So which one would be the best answer?
people are sleeping. <laughs> the first, okay, because of this, that's why we are going to remove the hypotension, dizziness, headache, nausea, vomiting, insomnia, weird, vivid dreams, weight gain, increased appetite, fatigue, sex, sexual dysfunction. Those are the side effects. So the best is B, is it? Yes. Tricyclic and depressants are contraindicated in all the following except recent myocardial infarction, manic phase, renal disease, seizure disorders. Anything, which one can we pick? So you can't use tricyclic uh, on the indications of the absolute ones. Like in myocardial infarction, you can't use the tricyclic antipresents, angina, heart failure, cardiac arrhythmias. Remember, we even said they were causing arrhythmias. Hypertension, glaucoma. Remember why? Because of the effect on the masculine receptors, urinary orientation, benign prosthetic hypertrophy, you can't use them also, why? Because not incontinence, but they, pre, they, they cause failure to urinate. If someone has got already a big prostate, it is already obstructing the urethra. And then you give also drugs that are preventing urination, so you can't give that. Also in pregnancy and breastfeeding, you are also not able, you shouldn't use this in bipolar disorders, which is, uh, it can induce mania, so meaning that you can't use in mania, you can't use in someone that has got psychosis, someone that is epileptic with thyroid disorders, remember the side effects, they uh, were a lot of thyroid disorders, adrenal insufficiency, pheochromocytoma, which is also tumor of the adrenal gland, hyperthyroidism, ren renal imp impairment, hepatic impairment, elderly patients. So all these, the drug is contraindicated. So which one is, is not going to be contraindicated? Or which one have I, have I not mentioned? So Ren B D Okay. So you don't use in renal dis diseases, don't use in recent myocardial infarction, you don't use in bipolar disorder because it worsens the manic phase. So what remains is the seizures. But you also don't use in someone that is epileptic because it is going to lower the seizure threshold. But it's, I think it's the best that we can pick. You don't use in someone that is epileptic. It can lower the seizure threshold. All the following are mechanisms by which antidepressant drugs work except increasing cyclic adenosine monophosphate, reduction of postsynaptic beta adrenal receptor, Increase the responsiveness of postsynaptic serotonin, desensitization of presynaptic noadrenaline. There is a hand. Which one can we pick for this one? Anyone? Okay, we saw the mechanisms of action, basically getting to work by inhibiting the reuptake 
of these different neurotransmitters also working on glutamate and also working on uh, on the NMDA receptor the other options are talking about the receptors option A is talking about cyclic adenosine monophosphate so for me I've not seen any direct effect of this antidepressants on cyclic adenosine monophosphate so that is what I would go for but is there anyone that has got a different uh, a different option because I'm still seeing there are some I think the, there is a drug that we mentioned that should have been used in bipolar is there anyone that has got a different option okay all of the following are drugs using the treatment of the manic phase of bipolar disorder except remember the manic phase and psychotics carbamazepine lithium and depressants which one can we use for the manic phase do you think yes thank you so much all the following are used as mood stabilizers in bipolar or oh, we answered this which of the following is a good choice to treat newly diagnosed generalized anxiety disorder in a patient who is a drug driver now this is anxiety disorder so we'll talk about the anxiety which of the following effects is least likely to be seen with non-toxic doses of amitriptyline remember amitriptyline is a tricyclic and represent so which one of these effects is least likely to be seen antimuscrinic sedative hypertension and arrhythmias which one can we pick okay antimus clinic is true it can also lead to sedation depressing the central nervous system that's also true but by working on alpha 1 it causes hypotension not hypertension it has work these drugs can cause also these arrhythmias so i would go with c which of these classes of antidepressant drugs has the widest therapeutic margin tricyclic antidepressants monoamine oxidase inhibitors selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors all the above three classes of a narrow therapeutic index anyone to help c selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors all right thank you is there anyone with a different option nothing okay so we still go with SSRIs they are the best drugs you can use which of the following is least useful in the management of bipolar valproet lolanzepam lithium carbamazepam which one can we pick for this one B, thank you so much. Yes, we know valproate or valproic acid is used, lithium and carbamazepine is used. Which of the following antidepressant drugs are preferred in the treatment of unipolar depressive episodes and the depressive phase of bipolar disorder in the elderly? Tricyclic antidepressant, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, mal inhibitor, atypical antidepressant. anyone for this one
anyone Okay, we know the base, our base drug is still the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Which of the following drugs may induce suicidal idea, ideas? This is one thing that I didn't mention. These selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, they are good, but then they cause, they induce suicidal thoughts. That's their disadvantage. Which of the following can precipitate lithium toxicity when used concurrently? Phenytoin, fleece, frusemide, theophylline, morphine. Anyone to help with this one? Remember the drugs that can precipitate, that can increase the toxicity of... of... Uh, lithium drugs that promote urination like the loop diuretics the thiazides the NSAIDs it's what db which one okay b thank you so much yeah we expect b to be the one because it is a an antidiuretic. And then there was this question. I, did, I think I got it from, is it last year's? If not, the other. Write short notes on mechanism of action of antidepressants. So you can write something. Lithium is used in the treatment of all the following except bipolar disorder, uplifts, acute mania. Prophylaxis of re resistant recurrent depression. How about this one? Thank you. I also go for the same. Because this guy is used for the treatment of bipolar disorder, the manic episode, the depressive episode, and also maintenance, and also for major depressive disorder. Treatment of resistant depression, and also just augment therapy with other drugs. Which of the following drugs that is used to treat bipolar depression is called a mood stabilization agent. Memantine, amib, Amiptilin, moclobemide, valproate. Which among these is a mood stabilizer? It's it's an option. Yes. All of the following are used in the treatment of the manic phase of affective disorder except lithium, carbamazepine, olanzapine, nutriptyline. Which one can we pick for this one? Remember, you can use antipsychotics, you can use anti-seizures, you can also use lithium. So which one won't you use? Yes, D. So we can D. Which one? Oh, 
should uh, I should be on the antidepressant, not not the. It's an antidepressant, a tricyclic, not not on the mood stabilizers. So we already answered this one. Manic phase of bipolar can be treated. We've answered that. The following are the common clinical uses of antidepressants we've answered. Which of the following drugs should be avoided in patients on monoamine oxidase inhibitors? We've also answered this one, isn't it? Oh, we didn't. Nitro, nitrous oxide, pethidine, amphetamine, phenylephrine. Which one can we pick for this one? Which drug should you until use in someone that is taking the MAL inhibitors? Anyone? So I'll go for D. Remember we, we had mentioned to say when you are taking the mouth inhibitors, there are those drugs that can lead to the cheesy effect. Like phenylephrine. Hypertensive crisis due to monoamine oxidase inhibitors is best treated by propanolol, phentolamine, therapimil, Frosemide. Anyone who can help with this one? Anyone? What is the antidote to to the hypertensive crisis due to monoamine oxidase inhibitors? Okay, so there is this drug here, phentolamine. It's also known as regitin. It's going to be used as a first line when you someone has got toxicity of the the same hypertensive crisis. Which of the following combination is not correctly is not paired correctly? Now for this question, there are anticoagulants here, hypnotics or not really part of this topic. Carbamazepine is supposed to, benzodiazepine is supposed to understand them more when it comes to insomnia. But then we talked about carbamazepine here. But we just mentioned it, it can be used in bipolar disorder. Patient is started on lithium and now undergoes an orthopedic consultation for ankle pain, which is improving. Ankle fracture is ruled out with an X ray, and the physician asks for a pharmacology option for pain control. What medication plan would be the best recommendation? This one is also part of the test. Anyone that can help with this one? So in other words, just remove any drug that is an NSAID here can't be an answer. 
So which one is a painkiller but it's not an NSAID? So NSAIDs include drugs like ibuprofen, naproxen, aspirin, celecoxib, all those drugs, diclofenac, indomethacin, ketorac, meloxicam, at least those. So which one is not an NSAID here? that we can use to treat this pain because this person is on lithium NSAIDs we know they can precipitate they can increase the toxicity Write short, brief notes on the treatment guideline of an acute manic episode. Treatment guidelines. And, re and there were a lot which we read. Like, always report if you notice some changes in urine output, if you see any new, if you see any and too much nausea, vomiting, and those others. I think these ones which are remaining are a bit few, we can answer them so that we can rest a bit, isn't it? So I'm going to share the, the tutorial and also the notes that we can go through.